Welcome to Season 2 uh, Community Clash League by Heroes Hearth. My name is Not Paradox, and I will be hosting this awesome event. Here with me is Baja. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. We're getting players set up here for, for our second matchup of the evening. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people are at home are just like, wait, second matchup? What, what happened to the first one? Well, we can kind of get you updated on all the, mm -hmm. all the action that happened just a few minutes ago. We actually just had Little Rubies go up against Not Safe for Work, Work From Home. Mm -hmm. And that was our first best of three, and that was a 2-0 in favor of not safe for work work from home so that's going to be an exciting series or those are just exciting teams to see overall in the future but right oh, yeah. now we're going to get into pentanoms versus big ding energy i'm really excited about this we talked about how there's so many wonderful players on both these teams but we have people like moon going up against you know people like Alora, who i believe were on the winning team last season so you know just things to consider some some picks that the other might know like totsky versus mockery those are mm -hmm. friends and they know each other's picks. So I'm just excited about this overall, but we just got to get players in here in uh, just a second and we can get going into our next best of three. Yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be really tricky because I think one of the, the biggest things about these two teams is when you look at Big Ding Energy, they have a lot of people who are very dominant on a small roster of heroes. So you may think that you can just ban out their heroes and get a free win, but it's not going to be that simple. But on the other side, we've got Mune with a team that has a huge roster of the most wild things you've ever seen. So I'm very excited to see what happens here, but it's also going to be tricky because we saw in the previous series that Mune's team struggled in the beginning, but once they got to play with each other for a while, they dominated. Once they learned what mutant could bring to the table and what other things that they could do they were crazy good and they ended up taking the entire thing and mune was one of the forces for that being their shot caller so i would imagine we're gonna be expecting something similar like that once again is they may struggle this first week but oh man i i don't even like i mean it's gonna be crazy to see what happens but at the same time i mean we have that new tracer is there even a world where we see Mockery play New Tracer. I don't think they give it to them. It's one of those things like they're known for it. If and and I'm not I'm not a god by any means, but if I were to play in any sort of league play or competitive setting, like Asmodee would be considered banned against me because I just I mm -hmm. play a lot of it and that's the one hero I can shine on. Whether or not it would be a win for us or it, it's it's comfort picks. Like getting rid of those comfort picks oh, yeah. really it forces someone on something like let's say you ban out you know you ban out these these range assassins like let's say hanzo and tracer let's say they're just oh, targeting yeah. mockery and they have last pick like maybe they'll be thrown into something that's out of practice something that's just they're, they're not as comfortable or like oh you know they got like maybe they're like oh i'll play cassie and then they're like well cassie did have changes but it would work out here so it's one of those things that like I, i'm excited to see how that how this uh dynamic's gonna work out for this uh next best of three but we're just waiting on one player to get in here we always have to shame them publicly when it is just one player um, so we'll get them in here in just a second, but we're, I'm just, I'm honest to God, I'm just super excited for our next best of three. So while we're waiting for said player, let's get everyone at home updated on, uh, what map we're going to and how we got here. The, mm -hmm. uh, home team, which is going to be the members of Pentanoms won the coin flip opting for map pick priority. They banned out Hanamura Temple and Garden of Terror. Dragonshire and Sky Temple were banned up by the members of Big Ding Energy. And so since they get first pick, since Pentanoms chose map pick. Mm -hmm. Pentanoms has chosen to take us to Cursed Hollow for game number one. I just I think it's a good map. It's 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 quite large. You can get a lot of interesting pickups here. Like Dahak is often prioritized. Brightwing actually has a little bit of play here as well sometimes. So the possibility. I mean, like Emerald win for a little boss control here and there for for that global. It's it's something something to consider. Oh yeah, I I think Cursed Hollow is is like the original classic map to me. Like. It wasn't really the first one introduced, but to me, it is a classic. It's one that everyone is familiar with. The strategies are relatively straightforward. Um, but what I love about Cursed Hollow is it's one of those maps where if, if the, oh, I just want to point out, Rackham, again, racking up the subs. Uh, oh we've God. got 10 gifted subs from Rackham. He has gifted 115 Dear subs Lord. in this channel. Uh, which is just awesome. So thank you so much for that. But um, yeah, Curse Hall is just, it's a classic map. It's like, there's a million different strategies that we've seen over the past five years on this map. And we can see any one of them because we've had players that have been competitive as, as 
early as season one in back in uh i mean preseason we've had competitive players mean fair was competitive back in the preseason uh in the beginning but then we also have players like mockery who've been competitive I mean, as early as a couple days ago. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting one to see what strategies get pulled out on this map. Well, we do have <laughs> just about everyone in here. We're going to get the team readies out from team two as I need to cycle through a million different chats. Um, one one thing quickly, I missed this earlier before we went to break. Uh, we did have Desert Jester donating uh, 3,120 bits. Thank you very much, Desert Jester. 113 bits from Wicked Kitten. Thank you so much. Uh, Brasky with the 20 excuse me, 20 months. Evil Grin with the 18 months. Uh, thank you, Schwing, as we said, with the Twitch Prime. I think there's a couple in there that I'm, I'm repeating, but I think that's just about it. I think Emote Control actually had 500 bits mm -hmm. in there, as well as Hoofit with 100 bits. Thank you very much, as well as, I believe, uh, Turk hosted us over with all of his friends, so thank you, Turk, for raiding over and bringing all of your friends into this, but uh, it looks like teams are ready. We're going to get going here into game, because as I, as I was saying beforehand, I'm just excited for Heroes of the Storm. Like, game number one and two of our of our first best of three series was an absolute hoot. But this it next one, was. I'm so excited for as well. But here they go. Here we go. We're in Curse Hollow. Paradox, what's what's your go-to? Like you personally, when you're playing this map, like what is what's like you, you load into Curse Hollow and you're like, oh, I want to play this hero and like play this strategy. I mean Abathur. I, I yeah. I've always gone back to Abathur, and like you said before, if if they play against you, they're gonna ban Asmodan. I did play in competitive, and it was funny because no matter what role I was actually assigned to, uh, Abathur would always get the ban anytime that we hit a map like this. He's great, even after a couple nerfs and stuff. It's just so good, and it enables so many different heroes in this game. So Abathur would be my go-to if I'd go for this map. But otherwise. Uh, this map's one that I always like to have a global on, even if you're expecting to take down the, the objectives quickly or whatever. I just love globals for this map. My favorite's probably ETC in the solo lane. Uh, and Russ does play a good one, but Russ isn't in this game. We saw mm -hmm. Russ previously did well. Are the people in this game willing to try that out? I don't know. I mean, we do see a URL ban. We see that <laughs> the Tracer ban didn't, didn't take very long on actually, that. Actually, that's, that's actually a... Um... Urel is actually a, a nod towards Kyle Ferguson. Kyle Ferguson or Tarask, as you'll see them in the games, mm -hmm. is a really has been working on the Urel. They've been they've been making Urel videos. They've been practicing it, how to counter it, how to play it. So that's a really heavy handed nod towards them, and that's that's a big respect towards towards that team. It, it I do really want to is. I want to shout out really quickly, Selexia. Thank you for the quad sixty nine and as well as um, fan of Kronos, thank you for the 100 bits as well. Very much appreciated for all the support you're all bringing to this event as we're actually approaching all of our bit donation for the players as well. We got the players because I believe it was Dave L came in with the 500 bits at the beginning. So like, or $500 at the beginning. So absolutely insane. Thank you so I much for supporting once again. I do want to just say really quick before yeah. they pick, do you think they're going to grab the Lunara because they're worried? Because you got to remember, they yeah. have Alora and Mockery and Alora has really done well on two heroes, but they don't end up grabbing that, that Lunara first. I'm curious if maybe Tatsuki might take it just so Alora doesn't Tatsuki get it. Tatsuki does play a really good Lunara mm -hmm. as well. She, she's a very strong Kael'thas, but Lunara on this map, I think I would prioritize Lunara over the Kael'thas here, mostly because like I think a lot of the mages are interchangeable. Even then, I think Lee Ming's a little more prioritized than Kael'thas, so you, you got different avenues, and there's exactly it. Good point, Paradox. Like, yeah, that's, that's huge because they're gonna force... Um, they're gonna force Alora onto something different. I was watching the rank uh, NA win earlier, the rank, rank win N NA, and Alora, I want to say, was playing Li Ming, so she might have some pocket heroes that we don't know about, and we're finally going to see them, but let's back it up here really quick. Joanne on the right-hand side, good main tank. On the left-hand side, Lunara Malganis, back onto the right-hand side for big ding energy. What do you, what do you prior to, oh, well, it's going to be Sylvanas at least. Sylvanas is good, and Chazzy plays a good Sylvanas. I always like Malfurion, and this is actually something that I, I saw in their team. I went, wait a second, Alora, Mockery, and Jazzy all like to play heroes that dive in really quick, as well as Vipey, and I was like, I wonder if Alicia is just going to play Malfurion every single game. So if any of them does dive in, they all mm -hmm. get healed throughout that entire time. And that was kind of my thought about their team was Alicia plays a really good Malfurion and their whole team loves to dive. So that's kind of what I'm expecting out of their team. But I'd still like to see some globals personally. Well, a global, I'll call him a global. Uh, Deathwing will be removed right there. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. Like, I actually, when, when I was asking you initially, like, what do you prioritize? Someone in chat immediately went to Haka, and I go, yes, absolutely. I, 
I 100, be- 100 oh my god, 100 believe that Dahaka has so much viability on this map because of the ability to move through the bushes so quickly because you have a ton between the top, mid, and bottom, mm-hmm. as well as getting flank positions on these objectives. It's not like Infernal Shrines or let's back it up even better. Volskaya Foundry Control Point B has zero value for Dahaka. The only way to brush dock in is is right next to the Biotic Emitter. Whereas here, you can get flank positioning consistently mm-hmm. around these objective phases, and that's where I think Dahaka really shines. Getting into the back line, you get that tongue drag on Malfurion. The enemy, te- the rest of the team is diving in. Malfurion can no longer heal. That's when things start to go topsy-turvy. Maybe even Melganis getting to the back line with that aggressive play. I love this overall, but Rhaegar will be banned out. There's going to be a Zul and a gray main. I act. Ooh. I, I forgot wait, the Zul wait, is wait, even wait. here. Wait, Zul's wait, usually wait. banned. Wait, this is main tank Zul, isn't it? No, we've got a Malganis. Mm. We mm. Okay, so here's the thing. Both, you gotta remember that before Kyle started playing solo lane, he was a tank main. You are so, correct. So there's a good chance that they're just gonna bounce back and forth based off of who's who's better at that. Because both Tim, which is, he's playing big scoop at the moment, um, that's his, his in-game name. Uh, yeah. Tim also plays uh, tank, but he's been pushed into the healer role a few times. So in this case, it looks like Miss Pause is going to cover the healer role. Um, but I do believe it's going to be Malganis main tank and Zul in the off lane. Uh, if you're going to main tank with Zul, you usually need something to give you a little bit of mobility to get around. Um, and you normally want to have some other form of engagement. I mean, it could work. Either way, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter at that point. I've played with it. I've played against it. It's so, it can, like, I think this can work. Now, I, I will agree with you. Like, Malganis is not typically considered a solo laner. And into Malfeo, I think that's a very rough go. Um, so, mm-hmm. into Malfeo, I think is a lot more favorable. We'll have to see how this shakes out. Like, I think... In 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 role sense, yes, Zul is probably going to be playing like a solo lane ish mix style, but I think that's going to be that mix style is going to be them and him and him and Kyle Ferguson going kind of going back and forth, cycling in. You know, Kyle's going to go in with the night rush. Zul's going to step up as well with the backlash and and the uh, and the uh, bone prison, and then just all of that curse strike value. I think like I'm very very on the side of Pentanoms for this game. I think they've got a really strong draft. Not to not to take anything away from the members of Big Ding Energy where they have a lot of good poke potential. They have burst, they have setup mm. and control. I just think that there's just so much value coming out from them. And we'll see if Malfurion can heal through that poison here, Paradox. That's gonna be pretty much the, the trickiest part about that is, is he going to be able to heal through all of that? We will have to see, but let's get <clears throat> let's, let's get to the introduction for the teams. On the left side, we have Pentanoms as blue team. We've got Moonfair playing gray main, Tatsuki on Lunara, Mistpaws playing white main. We've got Tauros or Kyle Ferguson on Malganis. We've got Big Scoop or Tim from Hero of Fitness on Zul. On the right hand side, we got the members of Big Ding Energy. We've got Alicia Five, wins on the Malfurion. Mockery is going to be on three, the Hanzo. Two, Allura's on the. One. Uh, Malfiel, we've got Vipy on the main tank. Joanna and Jazzy will be on that. Sylvanas, level one's just taking a peek really quickly. Redemption for Hanzo, actually. Interesting. Not, because, like, typically I actually see a lot of Hanzos go into uh, simple geometry and they kind of go into that quote unquote Hanzo build, as it used to be called. So that way they can burn through bosses and just have more poke potential. But here, this is auto attack based. They're going to go to armor reduction. They're going to be looking to play this a little bit more aggressive. I'm excited to see how this shapes up in the later half of our game. But we do break off and see Malganis. Where are you heading, bud? Because I see Zul heading bottom. Okay, Lunara's going to. Oh, wait, this is really smart, Paradox. Range into melee. It, it definitely works. I mean, the, the benefit of Redemption is that you have very straightforward point-and-click damage that can go exactly where you want it to go, and it's rather high DPS. I've seen Mockery play it several times over. The downsides are usually twofold. Number one is that you're constantly in range to get hit by a lot of tanks that are like ETC who could quickly jump on you. Uh, Garrosh, if he even lands a single Q, you're in trouble. Uh, as well as the late game. If you ever get jumped on, you lose Use those stacks and you have a hard time getting them back and then you could just get further and further away from getting that quest done um but outside of that it's still a really powerful talent i've seen mockery play it really really well so uh, i think redemption can certainly work 
Yeah, the redemption stack's currently sitting at two. We do have backlash for the Zul, who's going to be down this bottom lane. Um, no one in mid to soak up, but I think they're just mostly trying to force back Mockery. Maybe just get a little extra push down here, threaten a faster so that Mockery doesn't clear, and they can maybe step into them. But they're going to actually just push up the lane, make rotations. They're actually doing double soak mid to bottom, which is a very uncommon thing I see. I, I never see this on Curse Hollow just because the rotation is so very long. It's typically like a 1-3-1 a one, one sort of deal, and you break whoever's off in mid lane to go grab the bruisers for top, excuse me, the siege giants for top lane, which is actually what we see right now. I do like the timing and the and and the and the, and the calls on these. So we have siege giants for top lane, which means those are going to be out there slowly working their way towards the, the front gate. But we also have these bruisers picked up on the side of Big Ding Energy for mid lane pressure, then they'll cycle to their Siege Giants. Actually, they've already got their Siege Giants, so they're going to pull the uh, attention out of lane as actually Lunara finds the kill in top lane onto Allure. I wasn't even expecting that. I'd, I wasn't even looking at the health bar. I was watching minimap and I was like, wait, we have a Maltheal kill already? Well, first blood over the Pentanoms. Yeah, and I mean, the, the thing that's that's great about what Pentanoms is doing is they're trying to close out this game early. They're trying to get rid of fountains quickly. They're trying to destroy structures. Um, the downside is that while doing that, if they wouldn't have gotten that kill on Mal Malthael, they would have been down almost a full level because mm -hmm. they did Your not soak cool. bottom and Mockery is able to push in two to three waves. But, where? Damage man, over time. That, yeah, damage over time. That's just what happens sometimes. And, and that's the thing that's so crazy about this is like, these teams are going back and forth. They're both got these kills. This first objective, it looks favorable for Big Ding Energy. I mean, are they gonna be able to get over there to even get a single interrupt? It doesn't look like it. A little late on the rotation as they are clearing out mid lane. Uh, I do want to point out, Mockery did go into Ignore All Distractions at level 4. So this is this is basically, if if we're equating it to anything in the past, this is like the old Rich build where like nobody was going auto attack on Hanzo. And then Rich did it and everyone's like, oh my god, you can, you can auto attack and win the game. Like yeah, like Hanzo, especially with sharpened arrowheads at level 7. So you have an increased attack range. You instantly kill a minion. So like all of this is beneficial to Mockery, oh, yeah. and, and this is going to really set up the team to just get so much value in the later half of these engagements. Um, as, as while they were down in bottom lane trying to deal with them, they end up getting a free front gate in mid lane, or at least the majority of the front gate in mid lane. Oh yeah, Rich Rich actually ended up settling on such an odd build. He, he took sharpened, or he, he took uh, ignore all distractions while still going full W build on yeah. the rest of it. Because he was like, right if they nerf W talents, he's like, no, nah, I'm just gonna get the longer range and one shot minions. And it was the weirdest build, but it's good that you brought that up because he does, I mean, this is going in kind of the direction that, that Rich went. It was really interesting to see how it's kind of a little bit of a callback, but it still has that flair that Mockery goes, because Mockery loves redemption. He plays a mean redemption. So overall, I mean, this is looking like such a close game. Uh, there's half a level lead in favor of Big Ding Energy because of that soak that they've been able to get, particularly on Mockery in that bottom lane. We do have a little bit of an engage coming in here. Vipy and Alicia just doing their best to try to CC. Alora doing a good chunk of damage. Mockery just hitting the back line, keeping Miss Paws away from their team. So she's not able to get as much healing off as she wants. Jazzy's doing a ton of damage on that Sylvanas. Alicia, as well as Mockery, able to do that finishing damage on his ult, taking him out. And that's going to give them that second point, uh, getting them even closer to getting that first curse. So objective goes over to them, two, two up. Like they're they're in that advantage position, if you will. They're gonna grab themselves the Siege Giants for bottom lane. They do have Lunar in top lane. Allure is gonna be coming back up here just to try and push this back and be marking the wave and just playing from the aggressive side of the lane. Lunar just playing it safe a little bit here. Actually, Lunar, still, Toski putting a lot of damage onto Malthiel. Allure needs to play the save because they don't want to stack out another death giving more experience mm -hmm. over to the enemy side. Oh they yeah, still... but I do I do want to bring up one thing really quickly. Yeah, yeah. This is the point where you need to make that Hail Mary. And the Hail Mary yes. that I'm talking about is Pentanoms will not have level 10s and they cannot give up this objective or else they lose curse, but they can't fight on objective or else they're going to just die. They have two choices. They can either try to, and in this case, there's boss being picked up. Mm -hmm. um, they need to make either a crazy play, like going for a boss, uh, or they need to try to stall for a long period of time so they get those 10s. In this case, they're going to try for that crazy play, but they don't have the gray main available. They don't have their white main available. They're currently fighting a three versus five. Uh, in this case, they were trying to jump on the point, but they get CC'd, so Mune does not able to, uh, is not able to grab that boss. They do get their level 10s. They can fight over the objective, uh, but Mune gets taken out, and now at this point, they're going to lose a boss, a curse, and a kill, which is where that Hail Mary just didn't really work. Normally with these Hail Marys, you want to ignore the enemy when they're going for that, and you want to go for your own boss, but this was very well played out by Big Ding Energy. 
uh, Vipey living through that, I was not surprised. Luckily, they sacrificed two, and they stopped the curse from happening. So that will be still just boss and top lane, but no curse going up against them. I was actually sitting there, I was like, wait, are they really about to get this? And absolutely they did. Also to note, meanwhile in bottom lane, Siege Giants were pushing in, and that's going to be the fort going down. I don't think Greyman can clear this out quick enough. Even even Hans is already down here just to say like, all right, if there's a sliver of damage, I can I can just throw a storm bow at that and easily get that cleared out. But tens up on both sides, go for the throat for Greymane. So they're going to be playing more aggressive, trying to dive in. Pairs well with the Malganus, allowing them to just kind of step in with them. Lunara is going to be those uh, leaping strikes. So that's just more dive potential, more mobility. And they're going to just, I, I like this play coming out from them. Malganus is holding their 10. I expect yeah, carrying swarm, but dark conversions actually, I've seen it more and more. Like I watch Alex Dids stream here and there. And like, I feel like Alex Dids is always going into dark conversion and that's what i see at, at a lot of the top tier play yeah i mean having that carrion swarm is is usually the, more the meta option it's the option that's safer in most situations because you can use it at high health low health middle health and it's always valuable alex dids always likes to have some fun though you know like i always see alex dids no matter what he's winning or losing he's having a ton of fun he always likes these builds that he gets to do these crazy plays and has a ton of fun with it so that's one of the reasons that he may be taking that talent just because it's more fun for him. Yeah, it might it might be like I. That's why I also like watching his stream because it's just like oh, it's, we, we're gonna get dark conversion. Woo! It's not just gonna be carrying swarm as always. But anyways, all right. So fight's gonna be breaking out. No thirteen talent here on the right hand side. Pendanom's gonna be trying to dive in. Alora gonna get rooted. There's gonna be a huge condemn from Vipy. They find the Malkiel kill initially. Couple roots on the left hand side from Alicia. Carrying swarm comes out just in time and that gets that healing with that vampir vampiric aura. They chase in further with Mune and Kyle. There's gonna be the sounds from Alicia. A Vipey split from the team is going to turn around. The curse goes, excuse me, the uh, objective goes over to the side of Pentanoms, and they end up losing two. Is it three? Alicia trying to win through, uh, is, is trying to win through this, but they end up getting picked off. And with the three kills they just took, they could either rush towards bottom and go for boss, or they could maybe look for a fort and top. They could go really anywhere here because th that's the benefit. You get these two kills, you always should be doing something. Uh, one of the things that I always try to tell people when, when they're deciding on how to close out these games earlier, I'm like, you get one kill, you take a tower. You get two kills, you steal a camp. You get three kills, you take a fort, right? I always want people to be taking something whenever they get a couple kills because yep. the enemies are dead. They can't defend against it. And you can always get something neutral later. They, they have all these camps available on their side that they could have gone for after they got a couple kills, but they can still get those camps now. And they also were able to get a fort from that. Passive experience gain. But you know what? Let's see. The aggressive side is going to be on Pentanoms. Let's actually jump over in the, into their comms. Take the vision. Cool. You need to head here immediately. Come in. Come in. Joe's pretty deep, too. Okay, it missed. Perfect. We just poke. We just poke him. Don't have to hard engage. We have really good poke. We're going to outpoke him 100%. Who's our target going for? We just poke. Okay. We've been a little bit too hard on him. Yeah. Okay, we have to go up first. Just hold up. And never, don't don't dive like that. You just, you basically just want to play field and let us, uh, let us get Lunara down on everybody and let me auto attack. Watch out, sir. Well, some comms were called there. Little little poke back and forth, but yeah, I think they played that a little too quickly, Paradox. It, it is. It's one of those challenging things because you've got Lunar, so you do want to take these fights slow, but at the same time, you're going against Hanzo, and an amazing Hanzo at that. It's going to do a lot of poke himself, not to mention that they have one of the best healers to counter poke, which is Malfurion. He can keep everyone popped off versus White Mane, who tends to have mana problems if the fight isn't going very crazy right away. Um, she's not that good against those pokes. So this is going to come down to Mune maybe adjusting his strategy to adapt, or maybe they're going to see if they can continue that same strategy, but focus more on avoiding the damage coming out from Mockery. So they, they do get some push here, but it seems like Pentanoms is staving off the aggression realistically. They they kind of waited for a lot of lanes to push into them, and we're just like, cool, the, the curse is over, we'll go clear it, just as that's ending, so that way they can't just step up. But look at this bush party! Oh my god, they have the, they have the wisp over here. Standard wisp, no sentinel wisp or anything. 
and they're gonna start it. They go into the bush, they see the entire team, they're gonna step out of the bush. That's gonna be Hansel ripping an arrow. Everyone's down over here. The boss is gonna slam on the ground. Last Rites goes out onto Big Scoop. They somehow live through all of that. Root goes out onto Vipey. Trask is in the back line. Leaping strikes from Totsky, finds a kill. Vipey very low. They're gonna find a second kill as well. I wanna note that there is some dupe being finished out. They do get the snipe onto the Greyman as well as the Malganus. Lunar goes down, and they're just cleaning this back up. I can't believe it. They turned around, they wiped the team, and now they go back for boss here, Paradox. This was an incredible play. I mean, I was about to say, after that initial engage didn't work, I was about to say, man, the the sleep coming out from Alganus was long enough to keep that Sylvanas from using her ult and allowed them to win that fight. And then out of nowhere, it, it just didn't matter. Once that they, they overstaged a little bit in that fight, they got two kills, they overstayed, everyone got silenced, and it was just Jazzy and Mockery ripping through their entire team while Alicia just made sure that they stayed topped off that entire time. And that is brutal. I mean, those two need to be taken out. And it's difficult to do because how are they going to get back there that that quickly? They're going to need to use that Grey main and that Lunara dive potential. And they need to make sure they're calling these targets out. Because if not, it's going to be, again, Mockery and Jazzy just melting through teams. I'm just looking at the stats right now. We have 26,000 heroic damage from the Grey Main, 22,000 from the Lunara. Okay, yeah. 39,000 heroic damage from the Hanzo. Chunking. Chunking damage from that Hanzo. So, as you said, if they could, if they can find a way into the backline and, and somehow kill Mockery, that'd be huge for them. But the mobility and Alicia healing, it's not happening. As well as Joanna just tanking and peeling. Like, this is just... This is what they want. Like, they have Vipey stepping in and just pushing face, and if Vipey goes down, that's cool, but they're gonna wipe the enemy team? i take that trade, Paradox. That, I mean, that's really it. I mean, uh, it, it almost seems like Alora and Vipey are just kind of bait at this point. They're there to kind of just use their health bars to stall out the game for a little while, stall out these fights, and just give Makri and Jazzy a lot of time to just destroy everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's the crazy part is, I mean, they're not even playing like this in and out. They're playing, we're going to do these quick ambushes. We're going to immediately jump on you and we're going to see what we can get done quickly. And they are really good at these calls. So I, I mean, at at next fight, I'd love to listen to their, their comms just because they are so coordinated. I mean, if there is a next we, fight is the real question. I was about to say, we might not get a next fight because they just locked down tower with Jazzy. They start opening up mid lane. They've got some spell armor as well. I mean, you were literally saying like, yeah, they're just taking these short, short bursty fights and literally they, point blank. Hanzo arrow or a dragon strike and wait are they going for second buff keep really opening up the map okay not going for core I'm a little surprised by this I think maybe they were just a little worried at that the how these fights would go out you got to remember that the burst is still available Lunara still True. has both leaping strikes and we still have mute on that gray main and it could just take a second before they could blow up their backline and now they're in trouble so I think that's their main reason why they decided to just play this a little bit safer and go for objectives. Now, the downside is that objective gets less valuable for you the more structures you destroy, mm -hmm. um, but they still are at risk of the enemy team getting that objective. So they have to at least take it so the enemy team can't get it. Yeah, the one thing I was, I actually peeked over at chat and they were like, new core OP, and I was like, you are right. Yeah, 75 armor reduction from those giant... Um, uh, Little, evil little swirls? Circles? I'm like, evil little swirls? I don't know. I was, I was to think of a name for it, and I was just like, no, I got nothing. But yeah, we'll call it the evil swirl on the ground, reducing your armor by 75. That is, uh, that's, that, they're just, are we seriously just having a dance party in mid? Okay, they, they were having a little dance party, but the wave comes in. Uh, boss is up in 230. Looks like they're trying to, like, set up for a potential gank in the rotation before that 20 talents here hits on the side of Big Ding Energy. Yeah, it, it's always tricky when you're two levels behind and the enemies are closing in on level 20s because you can't just soak, right? Because the enemy team's soaking as well. They're going to get that earlier. You need to force a fight. But if you look at the side of Big Ding Energy, they're like, we're just going to sit back. We're two full levels ahead. We do not even need to walk out. We will get level 20s with passive experience alone. Uh, and that's what they're going for. Now, this is going to cut it really close, though, because they do hit 20s. And they're all about picking their talents. We do see uh, play the game picked up. We see deafening blast, the, the longer silence duration. We have radiating faith. Speaking of which, we have that uh, play the game going out. And Tatsuki's still channeling this entire time. Are they going to be able to just get this curse? No, we do see the radiating faith hitting all five members, stunning them all for two seconds. And we see Tatsuki sneak out a kill before she goes down. 
but the rest of their team is really looking rough. So we see Alora just chasing down Totsky, and this is going to be a really good opportunity if Big Ding Energy just wants to close out this game. Just Alora's revenge as they manage to wipe the enemy team, get the curse, and they're going to run it in through mid lane. And this should be game number one over to the side of Big Ding Energy. They don't have a Hanzo, but they should have enough damage. You can see that the evil swirl on the ground is going to be uh, reducing Jazzy's armor. But uh, they're not too worried about it because they've got a little evil broccoli that's going to be tanking most of the damage from the core. But that is going to be it. The GG's are called, and that's going to be game number one over to the side of Big Ding Energy. They go mm -hmm. up one in our best of three series. GG, well played. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they played that out really, really well. I mean, the Mogridge hyper carried, and, and, but it wasn't even that he was a hyper carry because if they started focusing on him, he hopped away and Jazzy melted their entire team. So normally you see, like, this was the, these were almost the old comps that you used to see happen at the end of HGC. You used to see, like, a Hanzo is just the main poke, do a bunch of damage while everyone else did their best to keep Hanzo alive. But then they had just Sylvan in the background just... Oh, we'll just blow everyone up. And they, they synergized their ult so well together. It was Hanzo's ult that would stun everyone initially. Then it was Sylvanas' ult that would come in, or or Joanna's, depending on how they wanted to play out the fight. And then after that, it was the other one, right? Uh, it, it would go from uh, Hanzo's two-second stun to Joe's two-second stun. So then Sylvanas doing a five-second silence uh, mm -hmm. once you hit level 20. And it's like, after that, there's no way you're making it through. So three people died without almost any healing at all just because they, they their team was just stun locked uh i do have to give credit for tatsky still sneaking out a couple kills even on those fights that they were losing though uh, it's it's there's a really good analogy it was like there's there's some green guy who said it once like that that composition had layers to it like uh, you, you had the, as you're saying like the hanzo era that starts things out you have the blessed shield that's that's your secondary it, like it's just the layering to this composition wasn't something i was expecting and it worked out uh really really well Sorry, some, I'm getting some questions green about, guy, question about some, uh, some green guy, yeah. Some green guy. Is this a Shrek reference with, like, onions have layers? Or no, are, you, are we going in a completely I would different... Never, I would never in a professional broadcast do something like that. No, okay, no. Okay, okay, that's fair. I think, I think your, fair. Your, your mind's wandering a little bit. Um, that's that's okay, that's okay. No worries. <laughs> it's seriously, it just, it's, but, like, as you were saying it, like, it it really, it had just layers to that, to that, that engagement, and they... Once the cooldown was was off, they were like, cool, rip it, go, and blow them up and consistently mm -hmm. wipe them. They wiped them, if I count correct, twice. Like, those two full team wipes in favor for Big Ding Energy. Yeah, it, it was... I mean, their their coordination is really, really good. This, yeah. this is going to be the one team that I they're going to start off strong, and they definitely have a chance to just take this entire thing. But for every other team out there... This is your time to start practicing because it's clear that they've been practicing. And this is what you need to see, what we need to see out of all these teams as we start closing in on that like week four, week five area where you still have a chance to win that the entire thing. Um, they need to start practicing a little together. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see still what we're going to see because they're, I mean, this game's not over, right? Um, we we still have a uh, a lot of chances for for mean fairs team right we still have i mean they played really well it just came down to just a little bit more damage than they were expecting i think their team comp had a little bit of counter synergy too for me whenever i see white man i'm like oh she is the burst counter burst healer right you can give huge armor bursts to your team huge heals to your team you can throw your ult out again even more huge heals to your team but it's all in short bursts the long pokey fights you have to burn all your mana just to keep your team up and you're you're done you get about 15 seconds of pokey fights and you're done and they kind of wanted to stay a little bit too much with the poke i'd like to see them shift that a little bit more where their whole team is is hoping for like a pokey fight or their whole team is hoping for that burst counter burst well, before we, we start our next one, we do have a map. We can talk about what map we're going to be going to. We are going to be seeing Towers of Doom for game number two here, as I am also not in the right Discord chat. There we go. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. But um, so Towers of Doom for game number two here. I, I personally always like Towers of Doom as any map, but I usually like it to close out a series and... This one, this could be the game ending match. Like we could be seeing two two O's. Me personally, I want a, I want a two one here. Like mm -hmm. I, I want game number three because I, you know, let's give the people what they want as many oh, games yeah. as possible. 
Um, looks like the teams are, hold on, let me double check that I'm not getting this just from one side. Okay, yeah, one side, no, both sides that they're, said they're ready. So um, I think we just run right into this because they're ready to go, I'm ready to go. Let's go ahead and check out Towers of Doom for game number two here. Push the buttons and uh, we can see. Same kind of question to you, Paradox. Going into Towers of Doom, anything you prioritize, not personally as a player, but just maybe as something like, oh, we kind of need this in our draft. Like me, I was looking and say, like, we need some sort of poke, like Hanzo, Li Ming, Jaina, like all of those, like Falstead even, uh, have really, really good poke on this map. Anything that you consider as a priority, as a, as a draft composition? Yeah, I mean, poke is certainly great because you can stall out the uh, objective. I, I think if you're going to do poke, you combo that with a global so that you can poke and then your global gets a bunch of value. But I generally think that like the team that wins bottom lane just wins the game. So yeah. I like Siege. Yep. If you can get even one kill and you have a lot of Siege on your team, wipe right through bottom lane and you just have the complete control of the map for the rest of the game. Uh, and then if you have a lot of siege, like even more so than the opposing team, you've got that dream available, right? Where you can mm -hmm. destroy bottom lane, do a bit of damage mid, hold bottom, do a little bit more damage mid. Right as they're about to take back bottom, you take mid and then you go up and take top and then you come back down and you're pushing at bottom. They need to defend bottom. They also need to take back mid or top and then they're just screwed. And so I always like to do a little bit of siege damage because I mean like a Greymane and a Sylvanas, if you can get both of those on a team, I, I don't even, I just ignore some of the objectives and I'm like, we're just gonna roll through bottom lane. Bottom lane, yeah, I always like to prioritize it too because it's just being able to hold the map as well. You you have just overall map control, sapper feeding. Like I, I, I've casted so many Towers of Doom games and the, you can definitely see there's a lot of teams that, that prioritize the bottom lane and when they do so and they can hold control over it, it's an easy win for them um mm -hmm. in that note as well like siege is really impactful but then if you're going to be holding bottom lane you often want to consider all right well what are we going to do with top and mid do we yeah. do we double soak between mid and bottom do we double soak between top and mid does that our, is that our solo laner's job and yes it, it typically falls into like a malthiel leork maybe even a Dahaka as well as prioritized. Um, Samuros is often a hero yep. here. Rexar sometimes. I mean, Zul slide through. I mean, Zul's able to slide through the first yeah, game. Maybe true. he slides through again, but first pick is on the side of Big Ding Energy this time. <sighs> Do they ban out the Zul here? I wonder. I don't know because Zul got to like fourth pick, so there's a chance yeah, they don't true. ban out yeah. Zul, and they just imagine that maybe people forget about him. But he is the best double soaker in the game um because he doesn't just double soak almost instantly with the waves he's also summoning more minions to push with as well so it, he's just the best double soaker in the game with, with no question about that um and so if they do go with that siege mentality then they have four people just constantly sieging and they've got that tool we do see a rag first pick though i mean <laughs> yeah, laura want, does get a rag so that's laura, good yeah. uh really quickly I had, to, I had to count i had to count really quickly uh which I'm going to say with Mit Witch, because I, I I can't read the rest uh, as it's scrolling up. Um, thank you for the 500 bits. Uh, yes, Hots. Yes, you Hots. Thank you for the raid. Thanks for bringing all your friends over here. And um, actually, I just I was looking over at chat once more as I was scrolling down. No ban on the Hanzo, but that's going to be a Genji white main? I remember back in season one of CCL, in game one, Mune was like, it, actually in the first week, Mune was like, I'm just going to hard carry with Genji. Mm-hmm. And then week two, everything changed. Like they were like, I don't want to play Genji anymore. Like maybe it's just like they want to play around. They just want to, you know, have some fun week one, get a little synergy going with the team. And then in weeks two and three, they're really going to be pulling out all the stops. We'll have to see here what happens. But Ragnar oh, Sylvanas yeah. on the right hand side, um, they could go for. I was actually going to say, oh, no, no, I actually agree with this. I was going to say they could go into like a new bracket if they wanted to to get some aggression. But Garrosh is just such a thick tanky boy yeah early game garage is terrifying honestly i mean early game garage you can control pretty much every objective and all you need is just a little bit of burst on your team and he throws stun burst boom something dies and you control whatever objective you want in the early game uh as far as genji on Munefair, i mean Munefair did play a really scary genji in that oh, yeah. first season the problem was they didn't really have a healer player they played they had a whole bunch of other people and so he had to bounce around a few times, and when he found the healer role, everyone else in his team felt comfortable. They all got to play the roles they wanted, and he he could fill any role. So now he's back in a position where he gets to play around a little bit more. He gets to play the things that he likes, things that he's good at, and he does have someone who's willing to play healer on his team that is a good healer. So that's where it's really going to come down to is, um, is he going to be able to get enough value, though? Genji does have that poke for those objectives. 
a little light on the siege damage. Um, but I mean, if you can get those resets, those resets can be very valuable on Genji. Oh yeah. Uh, real fast, Jules, thank you for the 500 bits. Thank you for supporting the prize pool for these players. And we're actually nearing that completion. I don't know exactly. I can just see the bar slightly on one of my monitors, but we're, we're getting up there. I do want to, I also want to note here, I like the target ban onto Alicia's Malfurion from game one. So respecting that right there, getting rid of that for game number two. But Big Ding Energy is going to go ahead and make sure that Totsky doesn't get the Kale Thoughts that she's really, really impactful on. They're going to force them onto a Jaina, which I think she still plays just as good of a Jaina. Going to see that double soak potential from Leoric on the left-hand side for mm -hmm. uh, Pentanoms. I was going to say Phantom Noms. Uh, but Zool's <laughs> still Leoric, up. Yeah. Zool I... is still up. Like, it'd, be, it'd work in the solo lane. Wait. Oh, this is... This is so much priority onto the Siege and bottom. Like they just, they're just like, we are going to live underneath your tower. It, it's really interesting. I mean, that Zarya is so good at sieging because if you start fighting and the towers target one of your people, you give them a shield. Then you have that person walk away. You do damage on Zarya, you give yourself a shield. 100% mm -hmm. energy. And now with 100% energy, you can take oh. down a turret in seconds in the beginning. So uh, it's gonna be really interesting to see how that plays out because they can pressure a lot, but there's a lot of wave clear from Jaina and oh. just, oh, what happened? Matlock oh. with the oh, Matlock. thick donation of 3000 bits. Thank you so much, Matlock, for pushing that, that prize pool up a little bit further. Very much appreciated. I'm gonna go ahead and just get a little get a little cheer in there as well why not and uh so we're gonna load up load <laughs> who's matlock uh just you know the person running the show in the background making sure that they're locking to the observer and making sure that all of the assets run perfectly and that you can hear us and the stream runs for all of you so shout out to matlock who's running everything in the background and selexia thank you for the 69 bits as we get into game number two on the left hand side we got pentanoms who are trying to take us to that game number three totsky's gonna be on the jaina jurassic or kyle ferguson will be on the Leoric, we got Moonfair on the Genji, Big Scoop, or Tim from here as a fitness will be on the ETC, and Miss Paws gonna be on the White Mane. On the right side, we've got Big Ding Energy. We've got Mockery on Zarya, Vipe on Garrosh, Alora on Ragnaros, Jazzy on Sylvanas, and Alicia wins on Deckard. Fight. We'll go ahead and get into mid lane, check out our level ones, and see what our first engagement looks like. It's going to be questing for. Allure, it's going to be Selfir's Hungers for that level 1. We do have the Warbreaker for the Garrosh. Jane is going to be into the Fingers of Frost at level 1. Proc Rock for the ETC. Uh, Phaeantian's in death for the, uh, for the Leoric, which is... Uh, I see it, you know, swapped in here and there. I wasn't expecting that, but it is more lane sustain. And uh, we do have the uh, Swift as the Wind for the Genji. Um, oh, also feel the heat for Zarya, actually. That's interesting. Okay. It's a little different, but it is a little bit more when it comes to the... Um destroying of structures 50 percent more damage when you scale up your damage with your trait and the 50 percent more damage in melee range you can really destroy structures very quickly so it is a talent that's picked up on maps like this where you're just trying to get that off guys i do really want to talk about these bits just a little bit we are 85 percent of our goal we want to hit 35,000 bits donated uh this encourages this event if you like this event we highly recommend adding bits because it increases the prize pool for all of these players and make sure that these events run smooth. We can get more and more community members to participate. And it's just something that we always recommend. So guys, if you like this event, highly recommend throwing some bits, throwing some subs, donations, anything like that, because it really does help out. Uh, but that, thank you also to those yeah. that have done that. Yeah, it's... Workhorse donating five, or gifting five subs right there, and Trainwreck coming in with their last 35. Very much appreciated, Trainwreck. Might be very low right here. Is going to get the shield from Mockery as this engagement is continuing to go on. They get a huge Groundbreaker, still living through. Alicia has some great healing from Deckard, and that'll be Mockery going down. First blood over the side of Pentanoms. They were not happy with the Hanzo play in the last game. Big Scoop tries to power slide in. They don't get the camp, but they should find the kill onto Vipey. Actually, no, Big Scoop very, very low. Needs to get out. They had 180-something health and they'll be able to get the Tickle Beam from Miss Paws. Yes, not Clemency, Tickle Beam. The Tickle Beam, yep. It's gonna or be- the uh... beam. Either or, both of them are good. <laughs> Honestly, Big Ding Energy had, I mean, that, that entire engagement was really valuable, but also, I mean, Alora's keeping their soak up. 
double soaking. We see that there is a little bit of soak that's going to be missed. I mean, unless we have Kyle getting down fast enough, but he still missed three minions on that wave. While Alora, on the other hand, she's holding the entire wave up there. So she's getting the double soak perfectly. Well, unfortunately, until Kyle has, which he just picked it up, uh, that Neil Peasants, he was not able to keep up with that double soak. So this is Alora really showing what's going on, but hopefully Kyle's going to be able to keep that up because now you can see Alora might also miss some soak here. Yeah, it's a little back and forth. They do have the, uh, that Neil Peasant, so they get that, that faster wave clear. This level four for the York's a big one. I wonder how they're going to play this objective phase. I've seen some teams actually feign that they're almost getting the toss over the wall. The big scoop armor reduction is going to be there. They pop the guitar solo to mitigate the armor reduction. Going to be able to, it'll, it'll still be there for a second or two, but they don't end up going down. What I was going to say is I actually see some teams feign that they're going to be going for bottom, but what they end up doing is they just leave one bottom poke here and there and then rotate forward, take the, both of the top left and the right. Doesn't seem like, actually, no, what? Leorx on the right hand side, Genji on the left, so they're kind of making that play right here. Alicia gets the channel down in the bottom lane. We are going to be having Leorx force back Allura for now. Genji gets the channel on the left hand side. They are going to be coming over here and trying to stop this. You can actually see all of the teams are rotating towards this one objective. And Ali oh, Allura, are you going to be able to get out of here alive? Deflect from Genji won't find the, the damage they need. Mockery now has a little bit of poke as well. Okay. And I wonder what happens with this paradox, because... Okay, no, they, I think they're just going to give this over. Yeah, this isn't really the time. I mean, Jaina hits most of her power spikes at level 7. Um, Genji kind of needs to wait until uh, a lot of later levels because, I mean, ultimately with Genji, you usually not only want your level 7 talents, but level 13 is also generally a big power spike for him. So um, I don't think they're going to make any crazy aggressive plays until then, especially with that Zarya that's kind of mitigating every reset that Genji tries to get. So Kyle going to be clearing out in this top lane. I'm seeing in chat, um, uh, 1,000 bits from brand new motorbike. Thank you for, for that. Uh, Dave, extreme, thank you for the 200 bits. Thank you for the 500 bits. Mr. Falk, uh, the biddy coming in from Kick. And I think I missed one up further ahead, but either way, thank you so much for donating all your bits. We we're getting very, very close to that goal for tonight for the prize pool. As we said, that these 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 bits goes towards the players. I mean, we might be able to get Alora something other than Ragnaros or Lunara or Malfeo. Like, these bits could buy her a bigger hero pool. You never know. The is going to be on the point as they get thrown around. Genji Swift striking in. They find this, the Zarya kill. Unstoppable onto Garrosh as they're trying to make their way out. Vipey does end up going down. Alora looking for a flank, but they realize halfway through that flank, well, that's not a good idea. So they back off, and this will be Sapper Camp pushed in through bottom lane. Oh, yeah. I do want to point out something that was really funny. Um, Alicia threw out three roots in that fight. While they didn't really secure anything major because they're going into this mobile team, especially that Genji, uh, that cube mastery talent on seven can be pretty scary if people do try to fight over those camps. Like... There's so much like aggression from both sides, like ETC uh, just power sliding and also tanking a lot of shots here. They need to get out of there as they get the root from Deckard Kane. But Big Scoop, can you make it out? Toss onto Zarya. Face Melt pushes them back. They do have these particle grenades and they end up... I really like that. Let's talk about this for a quick second. I know we have an objective phase. Look at what they did. They rotated Take down away from the team at a diagonal that pulled the enemy away, which is that diagonal is just an increased path that would, they would have to then turn to try and get towards the enemy team. So it just, it was like little plays like that where ETC sacrificed himself are just really, really smart. Genji also went to the bottom lane realizing, you know what, we're probably not going to win this. ETC just now coming back. Gets the swift strike onto the tower and bottom lane, which means that they're only going to get a total of six shots if they get both of these rather than eight shots in the enemy core. So. A, a nice, a nice little pickup right there from Genji. Also, just trying to push in that bottom lane, get themselves towards 10 talent here. Power slide. Wait for it. Indomitable. Can they find the kill onto Vipey? They're actually continuing to chase into this Decker game during as many potions. Moshpit comes out from Big Scoop. There's going to be White Mane dropping the uh, Divine Reckoning as the Entomb comes up from Leoric, and they find a split Jazzy, I believe, and they will get the kill onto that Sylvanas. Yeah, that was interesting. The most interesting thing that I saw was uh, Tim actually count or canceled his own mosh pit at a point. And I, that was, I, I rarely ever see ETCs do this. And it's kind of an interesting strategy. If you find that your mosh isn't working and you're gonna get more value by moving around and actually stunning, um, canceling your own mosh is usually only done when you just hit no one. But in this case, he hit someone it looked like his team was repositioning to go for someone else, so he turned it off and continued. It was kind of interesting to see that adjustment right there. 
And I see you in chat. I know, I know about the the bars and everything. We'll keep you up to date on the on the core health as best as we can. Currently on the side of Pentanoms, 26. On the right hand side for Big Ding Energy will be 36. So try and keep you up to date on those numbers as much as we can, and we'll get that fixed for you as soon as possible. But right now, bottom lane, they're trying to recap this, and Big Scoop is going to be able to force them back a little bit. But Alter Spawn will be singular, and they've got Sapper com Camp coming in. Can they push this in Paradox? Honestly, uh, it's really rare to be able to push these in unless you've got like a gust or something that you can trigger it or unless you've got a big play that you can make to try to take someone out. But in this case, I mean, this is a great follow up from Alicia as well as from Mockery to try to prevent this. Um, so they still haven't pushed in any, but at the same time, there's still double soak going on in the other lanes. So they're not really missing out on anything by doing this. They just need to make sure they don't die. Amazing peel coming out from Big Stoop, able to keep everyone off of that from dying. They're able to get back, and they do get that extra shot coming out from Leoric. So it was worth holding that point for the time that they did. Oh, yeah. Oh, they absolutely, they, they held that really well. They got the five shots, and it's going to be 26 to 31 when it comes to core health. Uh, 99 bits from Alex, thank you. 8-bit, thank you for the 8-bits. Ashen, thank you for the 1,000. DJ Tyrant, thank you for the for the 1. We have a, a mosh pit coming out, everything being thrown. The Divine Reckoning's there. The mosh pit continuing, as well as Big Scoop is going to find themselves in this inside this entomb. Mockery is going to drop the expulsion zone. They're trying to stay alive within that. That's going to be a garage for an ETC. Zarya goes down as well. Taras goes, gets picked up. They're going to try and cheat death, slow these members down. We've been looking to try and get to Alicia, not going to be able to do so. Miss Pause needs to back off as Totsky takes a hammer to the face from Alora, and I think they managed to disengage with just the White Mane and the Genji. Yeah, I mean, this Mosh into a... a uh, I mean, the combo that they have, they've got the Water Elemental, they've got the Mosh, and they've got the Dragon Blade, as well as they've got this... Um, divine reckoning that keeps them all up so genji's got this giant heal going etc's got this giant heal going and it keeps them alive the second that all of those things turn off though their damage dropped and their healing dropped so they need to make sure to look at these fights and understand where they're coming from uh because they need to be able to do these fights exactly the timing i would actually love to head into the the comms of big thing energy right now um as they're about to get this kill and they're going for this uh, objective I wonder if they have anything planned for this. Yeah, let's let's yeah, let's jump down there. I actually realized as I jumped down there, I realized something. We can't jump into the comms because Vipy is having is still impacted by the Discord issues, and they're currently using in-game comms. Like, we went down there, I was like, why is Alicia muted? Oh, right, where's Vipy? All oh, right, so unfortunately, sorry, we can't get in their comms anything. I just, I just remembered, sorry about that. So, um, before the next Alter phase, we're gonna jump back into Pentanom's uh, channel, or into their channel, we'll, we'll hear what they're saying, but right now, that was the Alter phase going over. They're gonna be able to get the mid lane fort with uh, the Leoric and the Genji Allura coming down here to try and stop that as they manage to hold back bottom lane as well. Really good hold coming out from the members of Pentanoms. Core health for them is 22, 31 for the members of Big Ding Energy. It's, I mean, this one's going to be really interesting. I mean, we've got the, the middle that's almost down on the side of Big Ding Energy, which means that at any time, if Pentanoms can get bottom again, they can get bottom then immediately get mid. Uh, so it, they're in a really good position, despite the fact that they are down 22 to 31 for core health. We have Vibe going for an aggressive play, throwing people just away because he doesn't really want to go into. But look at Jazzy just doing half of everyone's health with no care in the world because she knows that she's got that shield to back her up if needed. Um, we have some uh, some bits in here. You want to take those? Yeah, I was going to say, so the B, thank you for the 1,515 bits. Very much appreciated. Alex, thank you for the 20 bits. Uh, Historic, thank you for the 2,000 bits. We have hit our goal this evening. I know that there was a couple others in there, and they're just feeding to these to us as, as I can't watch chat and move the camera and, and cast at the same time. So we got a couple of those. Sorry for the ones that I missed, but thank you so much. We hit the goal. Stay a while and listen coming out. That's going to be the toss onto the Janus. She's going to be going down first. Big Scoop trying to make their way out. That will be Jazzy continuing to chase in. Even looking just to get out of here as a Warlord Challenge comes out from Pipey. This is a triple Alter Face Paradox. If they lose a bunch of members here, they're going to be tanking so much damage. And they're looking like this is Big Scoop split from the team. They should go down, but Miss Paws and Mune Fairs will be able to get out of that engagement. 
Oh yeah, and, and you see Moonfair's beelining to that middle uh that middle fort. If he can destroy that, then that means that it's gonna be he's their their team's gonna take a lot less damage here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, his plan gets seen and now he's going to be in a rough spot. He can stall for a little bit, but it's not really worth it. He's gonna take a lot of damage here, and it definitely isn't he's not gonna be able to take this in the in that amount of time. So he's gonna just There's try to stall. Line. He's, I mean, he's just wasting time at this point and opening up space for his team. All of this time that they're spending first here is time that they're not taking back this uh, this fort. So he's going to deflect, tries for a switch strike, <laughs> doesn't get it. But it, the rest of his team's alive. So it kind of works. I mean, Lior did get five shots off in their favor. They only took, I believe, six overall from that entire phase. So that's not bad on the side of Pentanoms. But still, 16 to 26 when it comes to Coral. Now, I will say this, and, 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 I think, and I feel like if anyone's ever listened to me cast, they probably heard this a hundred times. This is Towers of Doom. This is still anyone's game. Like, no matter what the momentum can be, whether it be six to nine in kills or 16 to 17 in levels, the momentum can still be shifted in any like split second. Like, 20 talents here with a Genji or maybe even a Leork with the Buried Alive, like, that's a big power play. Granted, they are going to hit 20s on the opposing side as well, so they've got some big upgrades for themselves on top of all this. I'm, so Fierce Smash, by the way, was picked up by uh, Alora. I don't think she's been able to use it because she hasn't been in a single team fight. I mean, not that, Leoric, not that yeah, nothing, but like, they're just double soaking. Oh yeah, Leoric and and Rag pretty much have not had the opportunity to join any team fight yet. So it's a it's a tricky one to use. But it, the objective fights are usually far enough away from lanes that Lava Wave doesn't get too much value in team fights either. So mm -hmm. uh, really, either way, it's going to come down to these later team fights. And like you said, I mean, we saw it last season. We saw a 34 uh to four that the four ended up winning so yep. it does happen like this can change around at any point uh especially when we have the level 20 talents come out where um i mean long death timers and level 20 talents are just so powerful especially when you've got like genji winter mute on jaina um the buried alive i mean all of those are huge once we hit that level 20. No one going for bottom lane cap just yet. Everyone kind of pushing around this this top area. That's going to be a toss. Warlord challenge. They blow up the Genji. This is now going to be a chase in. They're looking for more kills. Zarya actually gets thrown over the expulsion zone trying to get in here. That's going to be a Wraith walking Leor because they're very low on health. And this 16 core health is going to be taking another four shots, potentially eight shots here, taking them down to eight to 26 when it comes to total core health. It's, yeah, it's going to be really rough. I mean, the, the benefit is they do still have <laughs> that middle that's keeping the damage a little more reasonable, but they're going to get down to that eight. And because they're down to that eight, that's going to be uh, one boss and one objective away from losing this game. So they yeah. really need to find a way to get back bottom lane or they need to find a way to just force a team fight that's in their favor so they can gain a huge advantage and choose what they want to go for. I'm looking, I'm looking around the minimap just to see what they're going for. That's actually a toss up from Garrosh. There's a Molten Core from Alora. She just wants to get in, into this fight right here. Uh, Sophia smashes up and available as the uh, Tickle Beam comes out from Miss Pause. Actually, half of her health going down to Alora right there. They need to play it safe because they could look for a Sophia smash. I'm, there it is. They get the sniper. Are we serious behind the gate? I, I think that is just crazy. She didn't even know where she was. She took a guess. She got the vision from her abilities and just fired off an ult. Even with that delay, uh, that ult in that Ragnaros, it's a large enough radius that the 20% yep. health white main is gone. And with that, this might just secure this game. That's, uh, and that's, that's the gonna MVP be a... play of, of this evening. I'm, I'm like both games. That is the best play that I've seen. Like I know there's been team wipes. There's been some amazing team like back and forth. That right there. That snipe. That is absolutely insane to me. Either way, Explosion Zone comes out. Might be on the far side of this engagement. Moshpit comes out. It's interrupted. Taunt's gonna be there as well. And they find the kill on the ETC Paradox. There's a stay a while and listen underneath that uh, ice block. But they actually stay alive. Wait, nope. Ragnaros Wait. can snipe again with a meatball. It was it was blocked a little bit by the vision, but yeah, the uh, shifting meteor was was cast on the far side of that wall, and they find another kill. So at this point, I mean, there's nothing that anyone can do other than maybe have Genji try to stall this out, but against four people, and That's we're go, closing yeah. in. I mean, the only real benefit is that they don't have the AoE taunt. They don't have the stay a while, so he could actually stall for quite a while because they have no point and click abilities to really stop him for a long time. So he's going to pop up his ult, and he's going to do his best to stall this out as long as possible. We also have Kyle that's just doing a little bit with his Leoric, and we have Miss Paws who was able to heal Leoric a lot, but too far away from keep me immune up. And in this case, it's looking rough. That's Alicia who is able to get that channel off, and that is GG.
Big Ding Energy takes a 2-0 victory over the Pentanoms uh, for our final games of tonight. That I mean, was that was such a wild series, but it was so much fun as well. It really, really was. Really, really good series. It, it was a really good series. We got to see, I mean, Big Ding Energy clearly have been practicing, right? They have so much coordination. They know the team comps that they want to bring into these games. They pick the maps that they can use these strategies on. They have been practicing. It's obvious. I mean, mm -hmm. the other teams... I, I mentioned the previous series that I was like, it seems like both of these teams haven't played together enough to really get use out of it. Um, but it's obvious. There's no question about it. The Big Ding Energy has been practicing together because they coordinated their abilities so well and they knew these strategies, picked the heroes that they wanted and just went for it right away. So this is going to be something that all the teams are going to need to work to get up to their level to and i know that they can get there over the course of these six weeks and that's also the time for big ding energy to start getting creative now they they've they've worked together they're really great but what can they do to bring it to the next level when everyone else gets to their level well we'll have to see but one thing we really want to quickly uh update on you all on dear lord words are hard at the end of the night uh the standings we we had two mm -hmm. awesome best of three so we can let you know what the standings currently look like so not safe for work from home will be up and they will have a 2-0 big ding energy also going to be a 2-0 little rubies 0-2 and pentanoms 0-2 so pretty mm -hmm. you know it's it's the i wouldn't say same across the board but as the weeks progress, this is how we're going to break down who's going to be what seed for that page playoff bracket in week number four. So we have we have we've got some updated standings. We'll keep you up to date as the weeks go along. But right now, I think we are actually going to be joined. Um, I need to grab them actually, just gonna rip them right out of their call. We are going to be joined by Alora. Congratulations on your 2-0. How are you feeling? Oh my gosh, I'm shaking. For, I mean first things. Go ahead, go ahead, Paradox. I was just gonna say, I mean, <laughs> that that ult there at the end yes. was just mind blowing. We saw you pick the ult, and we're like, man, you haven't been in a team fight. Like, Lourdes hasn't been in a team fight this entire time, just double soaking the whole game. Like, I wonder if she's ever gonna get a good ult or a good opportunity to ult, and then boom, snipe, <laughs> hundred to zero from a mile know. away, dropping by slowly poking her until she was at twenty percent, and just boom. I did have a question though. Did you even have vision? I know your abilities do sometimes reveal. But when you actually threw your ult out, did you even have vision or did you just guess? It was a lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, was... I saw like her path thing. I was like, okay, okay. So she thinks I'm going to keep hitting here. So she's going to run this way. And then she, she went the other way. So it worked it, out. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. I mean, I, uh, the other thing is, I mean, Ba, you asked a question because I'm just I, I want to get into that same. game one as well. But okay, uh, yeah, uh, I actually it's this, it's basically the same kind of question because I actually saw someone in chat say this. Uh, what was your mic volume when you hit that uh, shifting <laughs> meteor second kill over the wall? Because you basically got back to back blind kills. I mean, people might have had ruptured eardrums, but <laughs> let's be real. They don't need them anyway. That's true. All right. So yeah. So paradox. Let's 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 get into game number one. Um. What what did you have uh for that cursed hollow game? Yeah. I mean, my biggest thing is a question specifically to you, which is they banned Rag. They took Lunara, and you are still your team still wanted you in the solo lane. Um. We've seen you on Li Ming, but was the Mouth Ale something that you were like, we I have to stay in the solo lane because my team has the roles that they want to be on. Um, or did you think about playing that Li Ming and having someone else go in the solo lane? My team was comfortable with what they were on, and I just, I tried not to feed. Uh, clearly, I didn't do a very good job, but <laughs> uh, my main goal was just to, you know, do what a solo laner does, soak and not. Mm -hmm. oh, right. I mean, it worked. <laughs> it, 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 it absolutely did like it was a really good layered composition we were talking about how you know there was there was the the arrow from hanzo there was the blind or excuse me the bless shield from joanna then you basically were just fishing for someone low enough and you just threw the last rights on them got quite a few stacks i, th I think through that throughout that game um transitioning into game number two you know they grab this genji they have a little more dive a little more aggression um was there anything you were afraid of or were you just like you know what? i'm gonna play my lane i trust my core four and we'll just slowly win out this game as you kind of did not gonna lie, I was a little worried I'd get caught out uh, multiple times, but oh. it it didn't happen, and team did okay, bot. So 
we rode a, whatever objective and advantage we could get. So. Oh, well, Paradox, do you have any other questions for Allure? Um, I don't think so. I mean, the, the only big thing that I've been wondering this entire time, especially after that game one, it seemed like you guys were so coordinated that it looked like you guys have been playing together for a long time. Uh, I know the teams were given to you guys a little bit before they were announced, from my understanding. So um, did you guys practice together a lot? Because it did seem like you guys were very coordinated, especially in game one. Yeah, we had eight hour practices every day. Are you kidding? Yeah. yeah Didn't you watch it, their streams? I I wanted to have them answer the question because <laughs> I have been watching a lot of the streams, but I did want to bring that up because it is you guys looked very coordinated and it yeah. did look like you guys have been practicing a lot. Um, so congratulations. Uh, on to shout outs unless Baja, you have any other questions? Yeah, no, if you if you have any shout outs, the uh, floor is all yours, Alora. Uh shout out to Mockery, because uh, honestly. His shot calls, they are insane. And I don't think we could have done nearly as well without. Oh, right. yeah. And chat, chat wants me to shout them out. So, woo, chat. <laughs> woo, chat, indeed. Well, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you so much for the games. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Uh, we'll see who you're up against then. But congratulations once again. And you have a great night. Thank you. All righty. We're going to throw you down back with your team. And uh, that is going to kind of wrap things up for us. First things first, shout out to everyone in chat during that game. I know we missed a couple people with some of the, mm -hmm. the thank yous for the bits and such, but we have hit our goal for week number one, which is amazing. Like, it this really is, is. This is, like, thank you all seriously so much. Like, supporting this grassroots event just means that we can do more of these. Like, the momentum we build with these CCL seasons means that we can pull in more players. We can get new graphics. Like, like. Go look at CCL season one and then compare those graphics to these. Like these graphics, like I saw the package ahead of time and I was just blown away by how cool, like the animated water behind us and everything. Like it's just, it's things, it's, it's all of you who are supporting this that we can just put money back into it. And we can keep growing this and, you know, just make the events bigger and better. I mean, as last season was what, four, four weeks? This season we're going into six weeks with multiple weeks of playoffs in mm -hmm. a new bracket format. Like, this is what we, I mean, I know everyone oh, wanted yeah. best of fives, but we, I think this is a decent compromise. We got more weeks with more games and the heroes and players you love, but this has been such a fun first night and we have five more weeks of this paradox. Like we do I, five I don't more weeks. I, I don't even it, know what to look forward to next week. Well, let's look at the schedule and let's see who's going to be playing against who. And from there, we're kind of, we're kind of going to go for it. So we will be seeing the Pentanoms versus not safe for work from home. Uh, and we're going to be seeing Little Rubies versus Big Ding Energy. Ooh. So these are both going to be some pretty good matches, and this is also going to give both of these teams, uh, all, all of these teams, more time to practice together. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's going to be it's going to be a wild one. I mean, is there anything in particular you're expecting to see next week, or anything different? I think these teams are going to be a lot more practiced up. I think this this tonight is going to be an eye opener for some, and uh, other teams will either ride the wave of, you know, we want it, we don't need to practice, and there's going to be teams mm -hmm. who are like, you know what, we want it, but I feel like there's a couple little things we can work on, and that's going to be the big thing in between week one and week two is what amount of work they put in, what kind of discussions they have. I can see that one of the teams has 71 messages in their DM already. So one team is already discussing how to be better for next week, which I'm already really, really excited for. But yeah, no, I think that's the big thing is, is team communication from now till next Wednesday and what they do with the, the seven days that they have to prep for their next opponents. Because these teams, they know ahead of time what their opponents are. You know, they have their schedule and everything. So they know that they're going to go up against, you know, Pentanom's going up against... Um, I ju we just saw him. I completely just brain, it. Yeah. Just, my brain just was like, "You forgot it." But either way, like, yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's, it's a new matchup uh, for next week. And we okay, so yeah, there we go. Thank you, thank you so much, Matt. Pentanoms versus not safe for work from home. So Pentanoms can look at the vod and be like, "All right, well, what were they strong with? What were they maybe weak mm -hmm. with? Maybe we can exploit these things. Maybe." And it's the same thing for both sides. Like, that's the one thing that I'm really excited about. As the weeks progress, they're gonna find the flaws within each other and exploit them, or even maybe just be like, "This team doesn't run that. Let's try and you know play aggressive. Let's play super dive and oh, yeah. see if they just can't run it back." I I'm on a tangent here, but either way, my whole my whole answer to you is it depends on what they do over the next seven days. I hope that they put some effort and some work into this because I think we're we're in for a treat for this entire season. Oh yeah, 
completely. It's going to be a lot of fun. And with that being said, guys, I do want to give an extra thank you to Juked. If you don't know what Juked is, Juked.gg is an awesome website with a collection of all of your favorite esports. You can follow different games, teams, players. You can check out point of view streams for many of your favorite players as well. So you can learn specifically from what they are doing and what they are calling out, which is awesome. So make sure to check them out at juked.gg. And thank you everyone for staying here. My name is not Paradox. I've enjoyed this entire week and I will see you guys next week. Baja, where can they find you? You can find me Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, Bahama Gaming. I'll be, I do a lot of casting for Heroes of Storm. I'll be doing that. Well, tomorrow night, as I as I typically do. So, if you if you're interested, you want to if you like the casting I do, definitely swing by for that one. Uh, I also want to give a mega shout out to Matt Lock, who runs everything in the background. Uh, for anyone who was like, "Man, bless the person who's controlling these these team bars," so that way we can see the health. That's Matt Lock. So, mm -hmm. thank them. That's the wonderful man who's just been controlling everything and making sure that you see the information you need to see, making sure that I know what matchups are happening next week, actually, and just keeping the ship afloat. So, thank you so much, Matt Lock. But Paradox. Before we run out of here, where can people find you? So, I mean, most people know me from my YouTube content. I am one of the largest educational YouTubers for Heroes of the Storm. I've got guides on every single map. I've got guides on 95% of the Heroes of the Storm roster, most of which I take from competitive players so that I can use their builds. You're not just always arguing with me whether or not my builds are good. I like to bring in people who are experts on those. Uh, so you can check all of that out. Google Not Paradox, you'll find all of my stuff. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys next week. Good night.